Good evening and welcome to a program devoted entirely to lefties losing it. We'll be getting into some of Kamala's latest antics shortly, but first let's start with a Hollywood clown actor, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who decided to post this video of himself trying to take down Trump's tax cuts trying being the operative word. Uh, like most Hollywood types, he has no idea what he's talking about. So Donald Trump wants to give me $70,000 in tax cuts per year. And by the way, he doesn't want to give that to everybody. Uh, but I just read, that's the average tax break for the top 1% if Donald Trump is elected president. $70,000. And you might say, well, he's going to give tax breaks to everybody, but not really, because of all the tax cuts, of all that money, nearly half of it is going to go to just the top 5% of people. Oh, wow, you got him there. Half of the tax cuts will go to just the top 5% of income earners. Could that be Joseph because they pay most of the tax collected? You do realise that's how the system works. And you're not getting a gift from Donald Trump. You just get to keep more of the money you've earned. And if you haven't earned it in the first place, you can't get it back in a tax card. This isn't hard. Let's make it even easier for you because I know lefties get nervous around facts and figures. The top 5% of taxpayers pay 65.6% .6 of all income tax collected, according to the IRS. So it looks like they're being shortchanged with that tax card. But, Joseph, this is the actor who uh, bleated endlessly about the ordeal of playing a cop given his support of BLM and he called Trump a despot in 2020. We shouldn't be too surprised that old Joe has more advice to impart to the American people. Get ready to lose some brain cells. If you want to talk about who's going to really help most Americans, it's Kamala. Trump's going to help the same people he always tries to help, the wealthy himself. He was born a wealthy guy. And look, I completely respect needing to vote for the candidate that's going to make it easier for your family. But Donald Trump isn't that candidate. Donald Trump's trying to give me $70,000. So, Mr. Trump, thank you, but no thanks. Oh, just an economically illiterate idiot and a hypocrite too because he will take that cut, he will pocket it and you're free to donate it, Joseph, to whoever you want, even the government. Now, we've brought you plenty of clips of indoctrination in schools but here we'll see an adult indoctrinate what appears to be a very young child, possibly the woman's own child, with radical gender theory by suggesting the names on a board game are non-binary with they, them pronouns. Pronouns. No wonder the kids are confused these days. So this person might not feel like a girl or a boy. So their pronouns would be them, them and <coughs> they, right? <coughs> and so when we're talking about them, we could say they really like mac and cheese. Do it have a hat on? Yes, they do have a hat. But what if the hat identifies as a pumpkin? These ideologues can't even enjoy a board game with their kids without using it as an opportunity to push their mad Marxist ideology. Now to one of the Democrats' big social media hacks who appears obsessed with telling us how happy she is to be child-free. It's a tad strange. I'm 42, child free, it's Sunday fun day, no babysitter needed, let's go. Uh, okay, I assure you the right does not hate this, they probably would prefer lefties losing it to stop procreating, but why the need to keep ranting about this? I'm 42, I'm child free, it's the weekend, in Atlantic City, party time. She does know that you can be 42 and still go out, even if you're a mum and the kids don't stay toddlers forever. But at least while this Democrat fangirl Angela is doing her child-free shtick, she's not dancing. Where's the music? I mean, bless her, she's adorable in a slightly demented kind of way. 
Now to uh, the demented kind of way without the adorableness. So let's check in with the ladies of The View. And here one of them tries to make a sane, obvious point that you shouldn't be mean or disown friends or family whose politics differ from yours. It doesn't go well. First there's pushback from Joy Behar and then Anna Navarro loses it. We shouldn't demean Trump supporters. We shouldn't call them no, names. We shouldn't say they're not. cultists or ignorant. They have issues. Because we all have them in our lives and we all <laughs> no, but we all have them in our lives yeah. and we love them. And if they don't change, it's not gonna change my relationship with them. Well, I, I do think we should call them names. And I think Donald Trump <laughs> I think I think uh, you know brother is dumb as hell because if he jealous. gets into that vice presidential mansion he's gonna miss a lot of good parties if he's estranged from his brother yeah forget about your principles think of the parties navarro was a hipping abuse there on tim walz's brother for endorsing trump now let's look at this exchange between charlie kirk and a confused young man who thinks he's smarter than he actually is, whose arguments pretty much amount to shouting racist, bigot, transphobe. The racist who does not statistics or facts, you are not a gender scientist. You cannot speak on that because what? you cannot understand. What, what percentage of murders do blacks commit in America? We shouldn't justify you being here by giving you an audience. You do not speak accurate facts what have i said that's not factual or not true or anything that i've said that's racist name one thing yeah black people are 13 percent of the population and they commit 50 percent of the murders you can look it up over please wait you you what's your source the fbi the department of justice <laughs> FBI, Department of Justice. It did not get any better for this angry, befuddled lefty losing it. It is a fact that blacks have a disproportionate amount of the violent crime in their community. Why do you think that is? I'm not here to debate with you because I don't want to platform you. <laughs> You're a racist. Wait, you called me a racist. What have I ever said that's racist? Or do you just think numbers are racist? You said yeah, a was racist. Y'all don't f***ing understand statistics. How are you speaking on numbers? F off. Thanks for your time. Oh dear, that sad soy boy doesn't want to give Kirk a platform, the dude with millions and millions of followers. That makes sense. Now, MSNBC wish they had as many viewers as Turning Point USA. Uh, we have more people watching this segment online than most the most watched MSNBC shows. I'm not kidding. And this may be why. They've veered so far left that they are advocating for Elon Musk to be punished for not being a government mouthpiece. And he has a right to express his opinion. However, that right is not unlimited, and he is under some special limitations that wouldn't apply to normal people, because his companies, specifically Starlink and SpaceX, are government contractors. And as such, he has obligations to the government that would, for any normal person, and should for him, require him to moderate his speech in the interest of national security. So what you have is somebody who runs really strategic defense and aerospace projects for the federal government who's actively undermining the government which is paying him and somewhere in there is a legal case that needs to be prosecuted moderate his speech in the interest of national security somewhere in there there is a case that needs to be prosecuted what do you mean they want to create new laws to have a sham trial like they did with Trump? And how exactly is Elon Musk doing anything that could compromise national security by allowing inconvenient facts to be shared on X, allowing free debate is a threat to the national security now? No wonder no one is watching MSNBC, but what they lack in audience numbers, they make up for in pure hypocrisy. Here they claim that mispronouncing Kamala's name, the latest preferred pronunciation of her name, amounts to racism and sexism. But here is a full minute of lefties doing just that, including plenty of them on MSNBC. See if you can count how many times Kamala's name is mispronounced in this next clip. The hate campaign against Kamala Harris has begun. You'll notice 
They purposefully pronounce her name wrong. Kamala Harris. 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 People like Kamala Harris. But as Kamala said, Kamala Harris. Kamala and I are Kamala Harris. 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 Kamala Harris is Kamala. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. The Kamala Harris was a very very good prosecutor. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. I know her. And Kamala was first Biden and Kamala. Kamala Harris. 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 And to the ca Kamala point, they purposefully pronounce her name wrong. They say Kamala. They do it all the time. It is on purpose. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris was talking about this. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. I counted 61. There's so many racist, sexist lefties. Now to the worst thing to happen to the American education system. Take it away, Randy. If we win, that means we strengthen democracy. That means we strengthen our freedoms. That means the middle class can be ascended. That means we strengthen education. We strengthen the economy. We strengthen our rights. That was president of the American Federation of Teachers. Now to a woman in a burqa whining about Vietnam vets being proud of their service. This is so crazy that I'm wondering whether it's satire. I just think it's so distasteful and sick that like all these older men walk around with their like Vietnam vet hats and like bumper stickers and I'm just like, mm, in what world is it cool to like invade a country and like kill lots of people and I mean that's not a defensive war. And especially when there's like a lot of Asian men like Filipinos who fought in that war. I'm just like, guys, it's not cool. It makes me actually feel sick to my stomach. You know what's upsetting to me? Seeing a woman in a free country where she has full rights choose to subjugate herself, where she's completely dehumanised, uh, whether it's behind a burqa or a niqab, where she's hidden from the world. Women in countries like Iran are being beaten, imprisoned and even killed fighting against hijab laws. And then you have women like that in the West putting on the political garments of Islamism. By the way, uh, burqas are banned in more than a dozen countries, including France, and with good reason. OK, I made you wait long enough. Let's get some Kamala goodness. Here she is in the little setup that her campaign has organised. Uh, she's in a spice shop comforting a weeping woman. <laughs> issue, you know. Oh, it's going to be oh, good. We're going to be good. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. We are all in this together. Yes, we are. We're going to yes, be fine. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Huh? Yeah. Yes, Did you get some spices? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get some spices? Hysterical laughter. Perhaps the Gold Star families Kamala has ignored for three years after their loved ones were killed in the botched Afghanistan withdrawal should uh, frequent spice shops. Maybe she'll acknowledge their existence then. And if you think this was just a spontaneous encounter, this little spice shop is called uh, Penzi Spices and it has a hate page on their website called About Republicans with has a 842 word rant against the GOP saying things like we've done pretending the Republican Party's embrace of cruelty, racism, COVID lies, climate change denial and threats to democracy are anything other than the risks they legitimately are. If you need us to pretend you are not creating the hurt you are creating in order for you to continue to be our customer, I'm sad to say you might be happier elsewhere. Uh, yeah, I think you're right there. Uh, feel the love and unity, folks. That's the uh, love and unity the Democrats preach about. Now, Kamala's always had a taste for the consequential issues. Here's a clip of her opining about the colour of Starbucks coffee cups, their lids. So you know how those lids are, because this is, well, I'm just going to speak, okay? So this is it. So you know how those lids on those Starbucks cups, they're white, right? And so if you wear lipstick, 
they get all over the lid. And so then I find myself in meetings if I'm the only woman, and that's kind of, and so I keep taking the lid off and having my cup out so that I don't have that big lipstick mark on the lid. <laughs> so I said, can we do something about the color of the lid? <laughs> It's, it's almost impossible to parody that. But uh, thank God we have Esty Pouty because she's done just that. That's my jam. <laughs> so y'all know how they have those, you know, white cups, white lids and Starbucks. And, you know, I'm just, I'm going to speak. I'm going to say it, right? <laughs> so, you know, they have those lids. And, you know, if you're the only woman and you're wearing lipstick. <laughs> I'm in that meeting and I got to, you know, put the cup down, got to take out the lid. I got to drink it. Like, it's, you know, it's a whole big thing. And, you know, so you know what I said? I said, can we do something about the color of this lid? <laughs> can we do something? And I have for you here a uniquely annoying lefty losing it about a family having a private conversation about folks confused about their gender. Hi, Harriet. Have you ever been paid to be hate crimed? Well, I have. So let me tell you about it. Okay, so yesterday I was at work serving this family that was sitting there like the three wise men. And then all of a sudden out of the mom's mouth, I hear the trigger words non-binary and gender fluid. Oh, and quit is in session and my ears are turned on. Let's do this. So basically, the mom was trying to explain to the dad what it meant to be non-binary or gender fluid. After a few minutes go by, the dad responds in the same way that every guy that looks like him would and says, you know, I understand where they're coming from, but if you are biologically a male or a female, that's what you are. And then I'm standing there on display. Oh, just exhausting, draining, draining. Now let's hear from a Democrat congresswoman, uh, Maxine Waters, who claims Republicans and those upset with the number of immigrants from Haiti being deposited into their small towns, well, they're just racist. There could be no other explanation. Well, let me just say this, that Haitians have been the victims of, uh, you know, not only our country, but Canada and France uh, for years, historically. They're black, they're poor, it's the poorest country in the hemisphere, uh, they have been exploited, and it continues all the time. Yes, I think they're treated differently because they're black, uh, because they are Haitians. But here is a local in Springfield, Ohio, who doesn't really see it that way, and he doesn't exactly fit Maxine Waters' white supremacist race-baiting talk. Let's hear from him. I think it's, like, kind of odd that, like, a guy like me has to come out from doing what I do on a daily basis to have fun because I see what's going on in these streets, and I see you guys just sitting up there in them comfy chairs and suits, and, like, and I'm getting out here every day and I'm broadcasting this, and you guys are just sitting up there in suits or something. Like, I, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. These Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into... Uh, they flipping cars in the middle of the street. And I don't know how, like, y'all can be comfortable with this. Like, I don't know, like, who's getting paid from this. I feel like... I honestly feel like someone's getting paid from it in the background. They dropping... They, you got... A bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTimed me tonight, FaceTimed me this morning at the welfare office that really need, like, that really need something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. And here is Kamala Harris taking credit for giving temporary protection status to over 100,000 migrants from Haiti. That is why, also... Starting with our administration, we gave TPS, Temporary Protected Status, to Haitian migrants, 55,000. And then more recently, we extended Temporary Protected Status to over 100,000 Haitian migrants for that very reason, that they need support, they need protection. Now, the Mail Online is reporting that Kamala Harris is prepping for the debate by practising with a aide in an orange wig. No reports yet whether it's this guy... Ladies and gentlemen, the real president of the United States. I mean, what an unbelievable experience it is. 
What a great show this could be instead. We've got an absolute idiot here running the show. That's, of course, the great Shane Gillies, whose Trump is the best in the business, and he stayed in character there for two hours for that Kill Tony episode. Look it up. Thank me later. Most of it is too blue for a family show like this. Now to a lefty teacher losing it. This dude with the proud trans teacher shirt teaches in Rhode Island and watch this totally sane and rational behaviour as he destroys a Trump sign. Yes, my name is Henry Gardner and I work at the Trump store on Post Road. Hit me with that guy out here threatening my life. He's got a, a piece of wood trying to hit me and he's trying to tear my signs up. And here is that same teacher claiming he is off on sick leave due to injuries caused by transphobia in the classroom. School teacher, and I'm currently out on sick leave owing to injury in performance of job-related tasks in the workplace uh, caused by classroom transphobia and homophobia owing to my own beliefs and opposition to the school to prison pipeline. This is a complicated situation, particularly because it is directly related to my gender identity and sexuality and homophobia in the classroom. Good luck, kids. Now we've seen the Gold Star families ignored by Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, we've seen them attacked by the ugliest segments of the media. And social media too. Yes, some lefties are losing it, are laying the boots into Gold Star families. I am angry at the Gold Star families who invited Trump to Arlington because they decided in their adoration for Trump that it was okay to let Trump, his campaign staff, and his campaign team's videographer and photographer on top of all of the aides and security. They invited them to Arlington to traipse over other people's children's graves. Just uh, gross and unhinged. Now, we always enjoy watching Bill Maher being schooled by his own guests, and that's precisely what the editor-in-chief of National Review did, Rich Lowry. Watch this. It's easier to get rid of him Look. because if he lost another election, that would be 2018, 2020, 2022, 2024. I would think, and I've certainly been the last one to say Trump's Dover now. Lots of people do. I was like, no, no, no. But I think this would be it for him. I think he'd still be, he's not like Joe Biden. He's not going to go peacefully in, out to pasture. But <laughs> Republicans will have had enough of Trump. Not of Trumpism, but of I, Trump. I, and I and be, you'd be done with all that you chaos. Can't be, you can't be certain of that, Bill. The, the one thing that's certain, if he loses, Kamala Harris will be president of the United States. And I wholly oppose almost every single one of her positions. I think she's a vacuous opportunist. I totally reject the idea that in the space of 48 hours, she went from a subpar vice president, everyone recognized as such, all of a sudden to the second coming of Barack Obama. It is preposterous. And the lessons did not end there. Watch here as Lowry and H.R. McMaster school Ma, Democrat John Avalon and the lefty audience. We've got one guy saying we should we should pull out of NATO, right? We should not, Donald, Putin can do whatever the hell he wants, basically giving a yellow light to China on Taiwan. I mean, the, you know, the, the autocratic alliance you warn about is, is, is in many cases rooting, rooting for Donald Trump because they think it leads to American division and decline. But the fact is, is that right now, if you're strong on national security, one party party's leader seems to be trying to weaken NATO and the other party has, has expanded it and strengthened well, well, except it. Except he's supposedly forced by Trump to do it withdrawal. It was done that badly. was totally was incompetent, done dishonorable, it was, it was a disgrace. His presidency has not recovered from it since, and our position abroad hasn't recovered from it since. And I think he can draw a direct line from that disastrous, humiliating withdrawal to the reinvasion of Ukraine in February 2022. I mean, I think what's weakness is the what's what is um, you know provocative is the perception of weakness. Now let's end lefties losing it with comic Andy Haynes talking about why it's so much harder to live life as a lefty. This is actually pretty funny. I'm a liberal. I don't like it. It's not fun. 
We all know that. It's not fun. It's a full-time job. Conservatives, that must be so easy. You're not learning any pronouns. You're leaving your air conditioning on. You're throwing all your garbage in one hole. I'm out here. I'm like, did the compost go out? Is the compost out? How are the refugees? Are the refugees all right? What's the air quality index today? I remember last year in New York, January 15th, it was 75 degrees. And all of us New Yorkers, all of us liberal New Yorkers, we had to go outside and pretend that was bad. We had to go out on a beautiful January day and be like, this sucks, right? Climate change. I'm in a t-shirt. This is awful. And that's it from me. I'll see you Sunday morning for Outsiders. Good night.